Well, thank you for inviting me to the Ottawa Writers' Festival. And, and in such a glorious venue as this, I hope I'll have higher ideals and swear less than I normally do. I um, Look, three years ago, something funny happened to me. I was the publisher of an alternative publication. I love saying that, because in Canada, conservative means alternative. I was the publisher of an alternative magazine called The Western Standard, and the biggest news story in the world back then, if you think back, was the cartoon violence in Iran and Syria and Nigeria. Now, until that point in time, cartoon violence to me meant Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner throwing anvils at each other. But some Danish newspaper called the Jillens Post published 12 caricatures of the Muslim prophet Mohammed. And a long chain of events later, riots were caused in Damascus and Tehran and Nigeria. Countries that actually don't have freedom of assembly. So when there's a public meeting and a rally in Tehran or Damascus, you know it's because the government created it. It made sense. Syria was under pressure because it had just assassinated the head of Lebanon. Iran was starting its nuclear program. What better way than to switch the channel diplomatically and have an external enemy? That's sort of dictatorship 101, isn't it? Have an external foe. But what was, it was fascinating, these riots, and even more fascinating was that they were about cartoons, inanimate objects. And I don't know if you've taken the time to look on the internet, because frankly, unless you were a Western Standard subscriber, the internet would be the only place you'd find them in Canada. If you looked at them, they wouldn't be particularly spicier than anything you'd see on a given day on the editorial pages of the Ottawa Citizen or the Ottawa Sun. They weren't pornographic, they weren't obscene, they just, a couple of them had no meaning at all, they were just a picture of a guy. A couple of them were mildly politically edgy, I'd say only one was sort of funny, but big deal, they're, they're a cartoon. Cartoon riots? Well, that was news. And then something to me seemed even bigger news is that this first news story, Riots About Cartoons, was being massively covered by the media, except for one tiny detail. No one showed the cartoons themselves. Now, this is new. If you go to cbc.ca and type in the word blasphemy, as I did, you will see many stories about religiously offensive material that are always illustrated. You can see what the blasphemous item is. That's how our secular media in our secular pluralistic society covers things. We don't obey the Vatican or uh, a rabbi or a priest. We show the news and if you are offended by it, so don't go watch the Da Vinci Code. So if you don't like jokes about Scientology, don't watch late night TV. If you don't like jokes about Jews, don't watch Woody Allen or Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, we learn to turn the channel. We generally ignore things. If we're particularly mad about something offensive, we'll write a letter to the editor or whatnot. But since when did the Western media self-censor when it comes to religion? That was a pretty big story. I'd say bigger even than the first two. Bigger than the cartoons, which weren't a story in my mind. Bigger than the cartoon riots, which were a story. Bigger yet was the fact that the media was self-censoring and their fibs about why they were doing it. I know why they were doing it. I know why they were self-censoring. They were afraid. Some of them were afraid they'd be dealt the fate of Theo Van Gogh, the gay Dutch filmmaker who did a feminist film called Submission about the place of women in Islam. He was killed. Who wants that? If you want to stand up and fight for freedom of speech, if you're at the Oscar night, if you're Richard Gere and you want to talk about fighting the power, well, I guess you could stand up for Theo Van Gogh. That's a little risky. Why not fight the power and take on George Bush to show how brave you are? Okay. But my point is, all the folks who generally don't have any respect for religion claim they were not publishing the cartoons out of respect. But we know that the media in general is secular and in general is left-wing, especially on issues, say, of sexuality, abortion on demand, feminism, gay rights, things that are anathema to radical Islam. The kind of Sharia law that would cause these cartoons to be banned is so conservative on sexual issues it makes Stephen Harper look like Liberace. But yet all of a sudden the Toronto Star didn't want to disrespect religion. It was a new moment for them. Look, I understand why they didn't want to publish the cartoons. Besides violence or property damage, which happened in other countries, and who knows, it might have happened here. 
there was the hassle. Maybe they'd lose subscribers. Maybe they'd lose an advertiser. Maybe they'd have to sit through endlessly droning meetings with some radical Islam outreach committee. I don't know, but whatever it is, when you own a newspaper, you don't have to be a missionary or a crusader or a martyr. You're actually trying to make money. Fine. There is no law that says a publisher has to publish any story. What irritated me a little bit is that their excuses said they were for any reason other than being afraid, which I thought was a fib. Anyways, we published the cartoons, and it was quite a story. In fact, it was not only a story in itself, but all the other media that self-censored saw this as a surrogate way to finally get into the story. And frankly, I don't blame most journalists, because Canada's media is quite concentrated. You've got Bell Globe Media, which owns CTV and The Globe. You have CanWest, which has TV stations and the, the, the Daily. So five guys basically made the decision not to run the cartoons. And a lot of journalists and editors and producers across the country probably would have done so had it been up to them. And so I sensed that in the media around the country, a lot of people sympathized and were actually cheering for us. We were holding up journalistic ideals that they weren't allowed to do. It was when we sort of, it was like a bar mitzvah at the magazine. It's when we became a man. And, <laughs> but one fellow who's not into bar mitzvahs much was Syed Soharwardi. He was born in Pakistan, schooled in the madrasas, does the Saudi anti-Semitic lecture circuit, believes Canada should live under Sharia law. He went on the radio with me on the morning of February 13th, 2006, and we debated the cartoons. I don't think he'd even seen them at that point, but either way, it's a strange thing. To argue against cartoons you haven't seen is strange, or to see cartoons, and you're allowed to see them, but you don't want anyone else to see them. That's an odd thing, too. We debated for about half an hour on CBC, lots of blah, 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 argy bargy. I went on to my next blah, 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 but he had never been spoken back to this way before, especially by a Jew. And so he went directly to the Calgary Police Service and said, arrest that man. He did. And the Calgary Police Service were very, very polite. He was a newcomer and they wanted to tell him he wasn't in Pakistan or Saudi Arabia anymore, and thus we did not solve our religious or political disputes with the cops. If I was in Saudi Arabia where the Constitution is the Quran. I probably would have been arrested, and that's the way it is over there. But we have a different culture here. We're pluralistic. You can be Jewish, you can be Muslim, you can be Christian, you can be atheist, and we can all get along and not foist ourselves on each other. We all follow Queen Elizabeth's laws, not Mohammed's. So the police said no thanks, but he shopped his grievance around town until he found the one group so illiberal that they took his complaint and ran with it. I'm talking about a government agency called the Alberta Human Rights Commission tax dollars. They put 15 government bureaucrats and lawyers on my file for 900 days. If you watch CSI Miami, you know that Horatio Kane doesn't even have 15 people working for him in his major crimes department. I was a one-man stimulus program for lawyers and bureaucrats for 900 days as they investigated the hate crime of publishing some cartoons. Now, I read the complaint, and if you're really curious, it's on my website. I just scanned it. It's right on there. His complaint makes reference to the law, but not any law that Queen Elizabeth has endorsed. It quotes verses from the Koran. And a secular government agency seized that and prosecuted a religious fatwa against me for 900 days. It was the first blasphemy trial in English Canada in almost 90 years. We're well trained when it comes to the separation of church and state. If a Catholic priest had gone to the Human Rights Commission with a, the King James Bible and cited biblical law, in Leviticus it says you shouldn't have a gay rights magazine, will you investigate them for hate speech? He would have been laughed out of there. But when a radical Muslim imam went and quoted passages from the Quran and went after that Jew publishing those cartoons of Mohammed, they said, well, sure. We'll spend half a million dollars of taxpayers' money. Now, in the end, after I made quite a fuss, I was acquitted. But that's not winning, because I had to pay $100,000 of my own legal fees, and the complainant didn't have to pay a dime. Unlike in a real court, where if you lose a suit, you have to pay the other side's legal fees. Oh, you have to pay your own, too. You don't get the government to run it for you. Oh, by the way, real courts have people called judges running them, people learned in the law, who take an oath of neutrality, not human rights commissions. They're run by political activists like Barbara Hall in this province. Sometimes they're, not, they're never judges, 
quite often not even lawyers. In Alberta, two human rights commissioners, one's a nurse, one's a war vet. I like nurses, and I especially like war vets, but I'm not sure if they're well-trained to measure to a nicety my constitutional rights.